Okay, class, uh, this will be your uh, third exam. It's going to be on muscles and muscle physiology, and it'll be on the introduction to neurology, um, not including neurophysiology. So uh, here it is. Let's just take a look. Uh, we're looking at 50 questions. Okay, it's a 50 question exam, multiple choice, true and false, and matching. Um, make sure you know the difference between the CNS and the PNS. Make sure you know um, how many uh, spinal nerves uh, there are. The difference between the autonomic neural system and the somatic neural system. And then the divisions of the autonomic neural system. Make sure you know sympathetics and parasympathetics. Make sure you know the names of the sympathetic and parasympathetic, they're AKAs. So you need to know the craniosacral division and the thoracolumbar division. I know what the components of the neuron are. Make sure you know the cell body, the dendrites and axons. And uh, I want you to be aware this uh, I want you to be aware of uh, the term subluxation and uh, the subluxation is anything that can create interference to the neural system. It's a blockage between the brain and the tissues or the organs and a misalignment of a vertebra can be a subluxation. A disc bulge or disc herniation, putting pressure on nerves can create subluxation. Uh, scoliosis can create subluxation. Um, muscle imbalance, you can have muscles on one side of your spine pulling that shifts a vertebrae, whether it be your rhomboids or traps or levator scapula, and if they're hypertonic on one side, it can pull the spine out of alignment and that can create inflammation and impinge uh, nerve roots. So a subluxation is any structural or functional or pathological um, changes that take place and it interferes with the transmission of nerve impulses and that can affect your overall health. Okay. You need to know the order in which information moves to the neuron. Be familiar with the dendrites and the axons and how the axons are myelinated and at the very end of the axon you have these uh, axon terminals and uh, at the axon terminals we have these synaptic end bulbs that contain these neurotransmitters and if it's at the neuromuscular junction that neurotransmitter is ACH or acetylcholine. Know the structural and functional classifications of neurons. So you need to know afferent, efferent, and an interneuron also known as an association neuron. And then you need to know unipolar, bipolar, and multipolar neurons. And you need to know their locations, where are they located. You need to know what a ganglia is, what a nerve is, what a nucleus is, and what a tract is. So review those basic definitions. A, if we're talking about a nucleus, that's a group of cell bodies within the CNS. If we're talking about a ganglia, it's a group of cell bodies in the PNS or outside the CNS. If we're talking about um, axons, uh, I'm sorry, if we're talking about tracks, tracks are, are a group of axons um, within the CNS. And if we're talking about nerves, then it's a group of axons outside of the CNS or in the PNS. So you should know those. Uh, there'll be a matching section on the uh, neuroglial cells, so be familiar with the astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, Schwann cells, ependymal cells, and microglial cells. You should know their functions. We know that the neural system is the uh, very first system that develops. That's why it's called a master system. Uh, review MS, multiple sclerosis, and I want you to go to YouTube and I want you to type in Montel Williams Chiropractic. It's about a four minute clip that I want you to watch about how Montel Williams was treated for this autoimmune condition. The difference between sympathetic and parasympathetic in function, what does it speed up? What does it slow down? What is myelin's function?
I would know the difference between endomysium, epimysium, and uh, perimysium. And then I would know endonurium, epinurium, and perinurium. I'd know the difference between ligaments and tendons. I would know about the functions of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the functions of the transverse or T-tubules. I would know what the triad is composed of. I'd know what the contractile proteins are and what the regulatory proteins are. The difference between actin and myosin. The different components of actin. The difference between white meat and dark meat on chickens or turkeys or birds, the ones that end up on your plate, how that's different than the ones that fly. The fast twitch and slow twitch fibers review that. Which ones fatigue easily, which ones are for power and endurance, which ones are for, um, for speed. I'd know about the precentral and postcentral gyrus of the cerebrum. Know the Know the page in the notes on how muscle contraction begins. There's a sequence of events. So you will have to put the sequence of events in order. You know, so you should you know, start with, you know, the neuromuscular junction. You should start with the release of acetylcholine in that synaptic cleft and then everything that happens thereafter. I would know about ATP, ATP and muscle contraction, when is it, what is it used for? I would know about glycolysis, what glycolysis is. I would re review CPK. How is ATP stored? The difference between concentric, eccentric, and isometric muscle contractions. And then what is an origin, what is an insertion, what is an agonist, what is a synergist, and what is innervation? Okay, another matching section on that. So those are 50 conceptual questions. That's your review for exam three, and um, study hard. If you need to reach me, you can um, email me. Uh, you can go to nutritionchirodoc.com and you can uh, find me from there. Okay? Bye now.